If growing an e-commerce business is your focus, you need a platform that's focused on growth. That's where Klaviyo comes in. Klaviyo is the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for online brands of all kinds and all sizes. Whether you're just getting started or running a well-known brand, it gives you everything you need to send memorable branded emails, text messages, and more so you can build strong relationships that keep your customers coming back. With flexible automations, powerful insights, and super precise targeting, Klaviyo is a faster way to turn great ideas into great customer experiences. That's why it's trusted by more than 40,000 brands like Living Proof, Huckberry, and 8Sleep. In fact, on average, Klaviyo customers see a 41% increase in overall revenue within five months. Klaviyo scales with you so you never have to switch. They support everything from garage startups to iconic billion-dollar brands. Want to learn more about how you can grow your brand online with Klaviyo? Visit klaviyo.com forward slash grow to get started with a free trial today. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash grow. Welcome to the 304th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Rutherford. Stay tuned for my interview with Nancy Stolman, author of the new book, Going Short, An Invitation to Flash Fiction. Stay tuned for the interview. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Nancy Stolman, author of the new book about writing, Going Short, An Invitation to Flash Fiction. Nancy, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Well, your new book is Going Short, An Invitation to Flash Fiction. What appeals to you about flash fiction? Uh, well, I discovered flash fiction about a dozen years ago, and uh, at the time, I had been writing long-form fiction for many years, so I had attempted, um, well, I'd actually written m- multiple novels uh, that were not published, but uh, I really thought that I was a novelist, and so um, I had been, you know, and I love reading novels still, but everything that I'd been writing had been this long form. So really trying to stretch things out and really open things up. And uh, when I discovered flash fiction, it was like the answer I, I didn't realize of a question that I hadn't asked, which was, do I really have to say all of that stuff? Because I really didn't want to say all of that stuff. I really wanted to kind of get in and get out and, and talk about uh, stories in the like heightened, moment. So um, as soon as I realized that flash fiction was a thing that even existed, it gave me tremendous liberty to go back to everything I'd been writing and ask myself, like, is this really needed? Or am I putting it in there because I think I'm, I'm supposed to? And it just kind of blew my whole mind open. I think that flash fiction allows us to tell stories in an entirely different way. They're not better or worse, but they're just different. And we're telling a completely different sort of story, which is really exciting. And so I guess I should back up just a moment and ask you, how do you define flash fiction? Are we talking about short stories or are we talking about something even shorter? Even shorter. So um, the generally agreed upon definition of flash fiction is that it's under a thousand words and that it tells a story. And I think that both of those are really important. Um, and under a thousand words uh, actually gets kind of long for somebody who's been writing flash fiction for a while. So most of the best flash fictions are well under a thousand words. Um, and it has to tell a story. And this is where um, we cross over with, but differentiate from things like prose poetry. Um, just because prose poem may be short and may be using sentences does not make it flash fiction. And so flash fiction really is about storytelling and storytelling in very 
tiny spaces. So whether you, you're telling that story through a traditional beginning, middle, end story arc, or whether you are telling it in some sort of convoluted way, there still is story. There still is movement. There still is some sort of um, climax, some sort of um, change that happens. It's not just like give us a little scene or uh, a little character study. There actually is something that has to happen. So a lot of people have heard about by now the National Novel Writing Month every November where people try to write a short novel uh, all within the month of November and they're kind of writing furiously. But you have created another challenge in November for writers for flash fiction, Flash Nano. What is Flash Nano? Yeah. So um, the NaNoWriMo is a wonderful thing. I've done it many times. And I know the executive director and all of that. It's it's a great challenge. And what happened for me um, back in, I want to say 2012, uh, it was October. Everybody was gearing up for NaNoWriMo. And I had a friend ask me, are you going to do NaNoWriMo? And I just said, you know, I would, but... I'm just writing flash fiction. I'm in flash fiction mode. I'm not in novel writing mode. Um, I just want to write more flash fiction. And so the idea came, well, what if in solidarity, um, I just write a flash fiction story every day instead of writing a novel. And my friend was like, that's a great idea. And if you sent me a prompt every day, I would do it too. And that's kind of how Flash Nano was born. That first year, I just sent her a prompt every day. And then I just kind of posted it on my social media outlets as well. And all of a sudden people started jumping on board and all the people who were in love and writing flash fiction decided, yes, this is a way that we can, uh, like NaNoWriMo, just kind of push through the resistance, just get a lot of material down on the page, a lot of great ideas that we can then be revising for the rest of the year. And so we do 30 stories in 30 days in November. So we're five days in. Um, or wherever we're at today. And uh, I do send a prompt out every day. You don't have to use it, uh, or you can use it in any way that suits you. The idea, just like with NaNoWriMo, is that there's there's not really a judge and jury. This is really kind of between you and your own, you know, muse. And that if you write even one more story in November than you would have written without Flash Nano, then I think it's a win. Wonderful. So do have you found how many years have you been doing Flash Nano? Yeah, so I think this is year nine. Oh wow. Yeah. Um I was going to ask, have you seen people post online their writing for Flash Nano? Oh yeah. I get well, I see them now. So I've got groups in Facebook and I've got, you know, in all different places on Twitter. Um, I'm seeing it kind of happening and people are used to it happening now, so they were gearing up for it and everybody's getting excited about it. But what's even more satisfying, I think, than watching what happens in November is watching what happens after November is over. And all throughout the year, literally all throughout the year, I have people contacting me and saying, here's a story I wrote during Flash Nano and it just got published. I just wanted to let you know. And then recently I've had people telling me, you know, I took all of your prompts and all through November I wrote stories and I put them I put them together as like a flash novel. Uh, so I actually like intended in November to write a flash novel and that just got published. So um, there is a lot of good work that comes out in November for sure. That's great. So where can people find the daily prompt and more information if they're interested in flash? Yeah. Nano? So, and we're still in the early part of the month, so it's not too late. Um, my website, I, I keep everything kind of, um, Uh, collated there on my website at nancystolman.com. That's N-A-N-C-Y-S-T-O-H-L-M-A-N.com. And you'll see a page for Flash Nano. I put the prompts there um, at the end of the day, but um, I've got a mailing list that you can get on. And then I will send you the prompt right away in the morning. So you get to be the first people to get the prompt as soon as I wake up in the morning. And um, that's probably the best way. You can certainly stalk me on my social media pages and you will see it come up there too. But if you want it first thing in the morning, just jump on the list. We have about a thousand people on the list and probably twice as many who um, are doing it quietly in their house and I don't even know about it. So that's great. So do you still write long form fiction or novels as well as flash fiction? 
I love novels. I love reading novels. I read novels every night before I go to bed. Um, but I feel like I have, and who knows if you, if you talk to me in five years, this could change, but I feel like everything that I write now comes out through a flash fiction lens. So even when I have a big idea for like a novel length idea, it ends up coming out as a flash novel, which is um, a term that I um, that I coined about 10 years ago and something that I teach in workshops, this idea of like, OK, well, now that we all know what flash fiction is and we write these tiny stories and they're, you know, compact and dense and nuanced and amazing. And we all love that. Let's apply those same principles to a novel length idea. So I teach people how to take their big novel idea and actually like filter it through that same flash fiction lens. So taking away all the extra, um, some people do it as like a string of flash fictions that kind of create a big arc. Some people um, just kind of go into it like a micro novel. Um, so it's, it's very, I see myself continuing to experiment and I don't know if I could ever go back to writing traditional chapters and traditional uh, paragraphs. I just, I don't, I don't know if I even want to do that anymore. Gotcha. Well, I know that you've written about trimming the fat. Can you describe what that process is? Yeah, I think. Um, and one of the exercises that I have people do in my workshops a lot, which really gets uh, writers into the flash fiction mindset is I will have them take a story that they've written and I will, you know, invite them to edit it down. Um, and usually when I invite somebody to edit something down, they're very um, hesitant. They're very precious about it. They, you know, they'll take out a little bit here and a little bit there, but they're still, you know, very protective of it. And then I tell them to just cut it in half, like whatever the word count is, if it's 500 words, make it 250 words. If it's a thousand words, make it 500 words. And as soon as I kind of instruct them in that, that's when the flash fiction change happens because now we're not being so precious about everything. Now it's about, okay, what must stay in order for this story to work? And what is extra? What is me over explaining? What is me giving backstory that's not really necessary? Sorry. Um, what is me just kind of in love with the way I wrote this sentence, but it's not really an essential part of the story. So um, when I think about how do we trim the fat, how do we shrink our stories? I think the, the question to ask is, what's essential? What must stay? And what is bramble? So I think about it almost like we're pruning a bush. Like, let's get rid of all the extra bramble so that what is left is actually emphasized. And that's the thing that people don't realize is when we create white space, when we take away some of those extra descriptions, what ends up happening is that the ones that are left take on like an extra significance. They become so much more weighty because they are the only ones there. So it's it's actually kind of a reverse mindset. Well, I know that I know that many writers have started their careers writing tons of short stories. Many of those stories don't end up getting published. For example, Joe Lansdale, the crime and horror writer, has discussed that early in his writing life, his wife agreed to work and he stayed home for 90 days. And this was well before the days of social media, and he didn't <clears throat> he didn't know any writers in real life, so he sat down and wrote a story every day for ninety days. And then Ray Bradbury also talked about that as a teenager, when he was still unpublished, he wrote a story a week. Why do you think it's a great exercise for writers to write so much in the short form um, mm. early on? Yeah, well. Um- and I have read a lot of, of Ray Bradbury and I read his book, um, The Zen and the Art of, the Zen, the Zen book. The, um, right, right. Zen and the Art of Writing. Yes. Thank you. I was like, is it Art of Creativity? Mm -hmm, um, yeah. I, I hadn't heard of the other writer that you talked about, but I think, um, I think it's, a, I think the short form is amazing. And I think that one of the misconceptions uh, particularly a flash fiction, is that it's some sort of stepping stone to writing a novel. Like you're going to write a short story as practice so that you can then write a novel as if it's kind of like the beginner level 
um, or whatever that may look like. And I think, particularly with flash fiction, um, that flash fiction is not a stepping stone to something else. Flash fiction actually, um, for me, takes a more sophisticated writer because um, the short story, the traditional short story, uh, can be from, you know, 2,000 words to 10,000 words. I mean, there's not really any kind of restrictions there. It's uh, so people can approach it the same way they would a novel, where there's just kind of like a wide open field. And I'm just going to say what I need to say until I think I've come to the end of saying that. And so in my opinion, the short story and the novel are really very similar. Uh, What flash fiction is doing is it's forcing constraints around this idea. And so rather than having a wide open field to just say whatever you want for as long as you want, flash fiction is really forcing the writer to get inside of constraints. And we know that constraints in general are a great way to trigger creativity, Uh, you know, and we've seen it in other um, art forms, let's say. Uh, You have to make a film in 24 hours, or you have to, um, you know, do a painting without using the color green, let's say. And so when we have these sometimes arbitrary constraints, it forces us to come at our storytelling and our writing in a novel way, in a new way. And so I think that flash fiction is naturally forcing writers to get out of this idea that that I have all the time in the world to say everything that I want to say about that and forcing them to get become a little bit more essential, become more of an essentialist around it and and ask what does the story need as opposed to what do I just enjoy writing? I think that we should have journals. We should be journaling every day as writers. And in the journal, we can say whatever we want for as long as we want. But when we have our our readers' precious attention, I think we have to be essentialists. I think we have to give them the most intense experience that we can while we have their attention. So for me, um, flash fiction particularly is an exercise in learning what is truly essential in your writing and what is just fun. So what would you recommend to someone who yearns to write fiction, thinks they might be interested in flash fiction or even short stories, but have written very little fiction? They have that Mm -hmm. desire, but they've never really done much writing. Mm -hmm. What should they do when they sit down and open up an empty document on their computer or face that blank page? Yeah. Um, well, one of my favorite exercises, and it's something that is in the book going short, it's, I call it the zoom lens. And it is, it's my favorite exercise for every writer beginning and um, uh, experienced. The idea is to think about the story you want to tell. So if you're sitting down at the page and you've got this idea for a story, you don't know where to start, how do I do it? Blah, 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 it's overwhelming. Um, I invite writers to consider in the entire timeline of this story, whether the story takes, you know, years, it crosses chronological years, whether the story takes place over three weeks, whatever it might be, ask yourself what is the most important five minutes of the whole story, even if it takes place over decades. What's the most important five minutes, the five crucial minutes in this story? And just write that. Just write the five minutes. Don't give us the backstory. Don't give us the buildup. Just drop us in to those most important, most essential five minutes in this entire story and just write that. Um, And when the five minutes is over, stop. And I think that that is a really powerful way to realize how much a reader doesn't need. Sometimes we think, well, this five minutes won't make any sense if I haven't, you know, given you chapters worth of backstory about how they met and, and whatever. And you are, you would be surprised the longer I write flash fiction, the more surprised I am at how little a reader really does need in order to be completely with you in a story. Um, We are, we are intelligent readers. We're smart readers. We're humans. We've lived in this world. We can infer and imply many things. And the writer kind of works with the reader, um, implying those things to them. So we sort of leave the white space open and the reader fills it in. And so Um, I think that this this exercise of just 
taking the five minutes and just allowing that to be the entire story is a really um, effective way to craft a draft of something that could become a flash fiction story. Great. Well, you've written and talked about the myth of the starving artist. How can people succeed both creatively and also have a full-time job that's separate from their writing? <laughs> yeah, I think that that's an ongoing um that's an ongoing journey for me and for everybody that I know. But uh I do think that there are a lot of people out there who don't even try because they think that it like, why bother? It can't happen. And I just feel like writing is a lifelong endeavor. And um, so, yeah, I have a, a, you know, I I teach college, I teach at the University of Colorado. And someday, yeah, I won't teach there. Someday I will be writing full time. But it's like every year, the balance just becomes a little more tipped towards my creative writing. So I think we have to take a long view of ourselves as writers. Uh, If anybody listening thinks that they're going to become a writer because it's going to be a quick and easy way to make money, I do suggest (laughs) rethinking that strategy. But um, but I think if you take the long view and you really think about, okay, this is this is building and building and the beauty of being a writer, as opposed to other art forms like being, say, a ballerina, is that there's not you don't age out of it. It's not like, oh no, I hit 40. Well, I guess my writing career is over. Actually, it's the opposite. I think the longer we write, the wiser we become, uh, the more interesting things we have to say. So we're lucky in that. But I do think that there's this, you know, this, this, these, these, glamorizing of the writer life, you know, whether that's, I have to be starving and in a little Parisian garage where I don't eat, you know, or whether that's, I need to have a beautiful picture window and have eight hours every day to write, or I'm not a real writer, or even I'm not a real writer until I'm published. You know, there's all these mythologies that kind of go through our head about what makes us a real writer And I think none of those things are true. I think real writers, you know, have jobs and also write. Real writers have children uh, who interrupt their writing and they have to go deal with that. Real writers live normal lives, not glamorized lives. Real writers aren't drunk all the time. You know, there's all these things that we think go into this persona of being a writer. And that's where I think that some people, they want to be a writer maybe more than they want to sit down and write. So um, I just I just want to reassure people that if your writerly life doesn't seem glamorous, well, neither does mine. And yet we are both real, valid, amazing creative writers. Great. Well, what fiction or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed? Hmm. That's a really interesting question. Um well, well, right now I decided to get back into the classics. So the opposite of flash fiction, I am reading Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. It's taken me months because I'm a very slow reader. And um, so I'm kind of revisiting the classics a little bit. Um, a, a, a book that I read recently that I find really interesting, and it's so interesting to me too when I look at writers and how I, kind of as I was just saying, the longer they write, the shorter their work ends up being. Um, I'm reading, or I just finished reading a book called Woman in the Dunes. It's by a Japanese writer called, uh, his name is uh, Kobe Abo or Kobo Abbey. And it's really, it's a really short, uh, but like really surreal, absurdist book that I really love. I, I tend towards the absurd. And uh, some of these Japanese writers have been doing some really interesting things with uh, playing with absurdism and kind of taking us in and out of these absurd worlds. Uh, So I really love that book. Uh, There's a book that I read recently, too, by um, a woman. She kind of crosses over between what I would say is prose poetry and flash fiction, but it's called um, Wild Milk. um, And her name is Sabrina Ora Mark. And um, I actually took a workshop with her last summer as well. And she's just also just kind of weird and absurd and uh, is doing some really interesting things with language. So I really love that. And then one of my favorite 
um, craft books, which was a big inspiration for me in the way that I formatted going short, is a book called um, The War of Art. And yes, The War of Art. It's by Stephen Pressfield. And it just, it's a really lovely book. If, if I think any writer, any creative could pick this up and really relate, it's really kind of talking about resistance and why we are resistant to our own creativity and um, almost personifying resistance. And I just, I revisit it pretty often. So it's probably time for me to revisit it again. That's great. Well, where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your book and your teaching and Flash Nano? Yeah, the the best way to find me is my website, which is uh, nancystolman.com, N-A-N-C-Y-S-T-O-H-L-M-A-N, good German name, nancystolman.com. Um, so everything that I've got going on is there, obviously workshops. I'm going to open up a new workshop in December and um, Flash Nano, which is happening right now. I'm on all the, most of the social media platforms. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I am on Instagram. And uh, yeah, that's, I, I think if you, you can also Google me and, and probably find me that way as well. But um, I would love to hear from people and I love hearing from new people. So you can always shoot me a DM and just kind of say hi, especially if it's your first time playing Flash Nano or anything like that. And I just kind of love to hear where people come from. Great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Nancy Stolman. Her book, Going Short, An Invitation to Flash Fiction, is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And Nancy, thanks for doing this interview. Yes, it's been so much fun. Thanks so much for having me.